studio now as Zoe Gardner, once again, communications officer at Asylum Made. And Zoe, you know what? It feels like we've been here before. We had the Songat Centre, which then got closed down to great fanfare. We now got the Jungle, which was, you know, a makeshift camp, which is being bulldozed, as Dom explained there. Is this really going to solve the problem? No, this is in no way a solution. Um, it's, it's very positive that uh, at the 11th hour, uh, our government has stepped in and finally taking a few very, you know, very few, uh, very vulnerable uh, children uh, to safety in the UK. It's very positive that uh, the French government has finally stepped up and at least uh, found uh, temporary spaces to accommodate, um, in theory, the number of people within the the jungle, but just um, destroying a camp, just like just building a wall, you know, you, you can hide these people, but they won't go away, they won't disappear. So where are they, where are they going to go to now? We hear about, again, as Dominic mentioned, some of them being bussed away to apply for asylum elsewhere. Yeah, so the French government has set up temporary um, accommodation centres uh, for the residents in a, a number of regions across France. Um, so anybody who uh, is cooperating with them on that is able to have housing, which is a great start because uh, one of the reasons so many people ended up in the Calais jungle was that they attempted to apply for asylum in France and the French system in northern France was overwhelmed, didn't have the capacity to house them, not even uh, unaccompanied children, and just left them destitute. And another reason is perhaps Western governments, ours included, aren't dealing with the source of the problem That's enough. very true. Um, I think that it's very, very true that we, we uh, are not dealing with this as a structural issue that goes across Europe. So Calais is a small part of a wider um, catastrophe that's going on across Europe because we have failed to invest time and time again. You know, the, these temporary accommodation centres in France and these few children that we have in the UK, that's, that's you know, a tiny fraction of money spent by those two states um, as compared to the amount that has been spent on fences and on tear gas and on these, these measures that haven't worked and that and haven't made the problem just, go away. Just briefly, Zoe, I mean, there was talk uh, in the Cameron government, at least, of bringing in 20,000 child refugees directly from that part of the world where Syrians have fled to. Is that happening quickly enough? Um, so the 20,000, finally, again, we are getting some more movement on that. We reached the end of the first year um, with, without uh, very many people having been brought in. But now it does seem that um, the government has managed to find local councils that are able to accommodate all 20,000 of those. So that does look like it's moving. But that is a drop in the ocean. It's simply not enough. Um, and it only applies to Syrians. And we know perfectly well that people are fleeing for their lives from um, Afghanistan, from Sudan, from Eritrea, from, from various other countries. And there's no legal way, there's no pathway for those people, there's no queue um, to get safely to Europe. Zoe, many thanks indeed. Good to see you again.